Meteorologist Zach Fidel here with you on the Saturday morning tracking Hurricane Irma with HurricaneTrack.com. Again, Mark Suttup, he's in South Florida. Uh, last night he had a long night. He put out a lot of the um, weather stations. You can always track those on the Hurricane Track app, so make sure you download that. But right now we're still watching the storm very closely because we've seen some good things in the short term, but also we're you know nobody in Florida is off the hook from this storm. But there are some good things that are just the least a little bit encouraging this morning. Here's the latest radar imagery. This is coming out of Miami and Key West. And clearly you see where the center is. And I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit so it kind of gets centered on your screen some. But I'm going to show you, obviously you see the eye of this thing. It's right along the coast of Cuba. And it's been doing that. It, it sort of came in and then it's just kind of riding right along the coast. And eventually this turn is going to occur and it's going to pull it farther offshore. It is close enough to Cuba this morning that we're seeing slow weakening, not a drastic, okay, multiple categories at a time weakening like we'd see if it moves straight inland, but we're just disrupting the circulation just enough that we're seeing some weakening. The storm is now down to a category three storm as of the 11 a.m. Eastern time advisory. So we're seeing that weakening. Remember, it hit last night as a category five. So we've dropped two categories, but don't let your guard down if you're in Florida. That really doesn't mean much in, in the grand scheme of things. It helps, but it's not changing the end result. And the end result is we're still going to see a very powerful hurricane Irma strike somebody in southwest Florida. Yes, you, you're sort of off the hook if you're in the eastern Atlantic side. You're not going to see the brunt of the storm. You're still going to see serious impacts, but you're not going to see the brunt of the storm like it looks like the west coast of Florida will as we go into the next day or so. Here's the latest track as of 11 a.m. Again, this is brand new track coming out from the National Hurricane Center. Maximum sustained winds have dropped to 125, okay? It is still moving towards the west at 9, but I can guarantee you that that's going to become west-northwest very soon because it does seem to be gaining more latitude. Um, and remember, they use long-term, you know, movement. They don't use, oh, it's what it's doing right now. They do, they use a multiple hours of fixes to get the movement, but it's still sitting right along the coast of Cuba. But the latest track, again, we're getting, we're, we're pretty confident it's going to do this. It's going to cross the lower keys somewhere between probably Key West, maybe right over Key West and Marathon, and then continue off to the north. Yes, it's weakening here. Okay. It's close to Cuba, but remember the waters in the Florida Straits are very warm. Some of the highest oceanic heat content is in the waters ahead of the storm. It's actually going to have the most fuel since it developed way off the coast of Africa, the most fuel that it has experienced in its lifetime. It's about to move over it when it moves over the Florida Straits and the Florida Keys. That is why you notice 125 now. We start to get a little bit of strengthening by later tonight, and then it ramps up to 140 as we go into tomorrow morning. Again, 8 a.m. in our morning, somewhere around Key West. By tomorrow night at 8 p.m., making landfall somewhere around Port Charlotte down to Naples, somewhere in that vicinity. And that is the big drastic track shift that we've seen is it's now going more so up the West Coast. Remember, Tampa Bay is right here. You know, Tampa's over here. Miami's right here. <clears throat> Orlando's somewhere right there. The brunt of the storm looks to miss Miami. That is good news, okay? It looks to miss this highly populated area over here. But that does not mean... Oh, you evacuated for no good reason. There are still going to be some serious impacts. Remember, this is a big storm. It's a very intense storm. There's still going to be wind gusts over 100 miles per hour, most likely in portions of southeast Florida from places like Homestead up through Miami. Maybe a little less once you get farther north, less than what we were thinking originally. But now we're going to take those 100 miles per hour winds. We're going to put them on the western side of the state. I'm going to zoom in because it's not just the wind impacts that we're worried about. It's really in southwest Florida. It's the surge. I said it yesterday. You know, this is going to be Charlie Wind with a lot more water being pushed. And that, that's the problem that we're going to see. But here's the zoom in image on um, the kind of pinpoint specific areas that could experience some of the worst of weather. If it falls a strike, remember the cone still goes here to out here. So it can stay out over the Gulf, but it can also come inland a little more as well. But right now, this area right along the coast, down from the Keys up through about Port Charlotte, there is going to be significant water inundation in these areas. We're talking 12 to possibly even 15 feet of water is going to get pushed in here because the worst of the hurricane is going to go right here and that eye wall is going to be pushing that water right inland into places like Naples, Cape Coral, Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda. Again, Charlie wind with a lot more water in the grand scheme of things and that's why we're really worried about this southwestern corner of Florida. That's where the worst of Irma 
is going to be. Let me jump over to the latest water vapor imagery. I'm going to show this because if everybody's like wondering, when is this you know, turn going to occur? It's starting to occur now. It's pretty obvious what's going on right now. Uh, you see this little circulation. This is in the upper levels. Remember, water vapor imagery shows you in the upper levels. So you see this little dip that's coming down. It's starting to tug Irma, which is right here along the coast of Cuba. And eventually, it's going to dig so far south that it's going to make the storm turn a 90 degree angle. It's going to start heading due north. And it's where exactly that happens, which somewhere most models put about right there. That's where that northerly turn is going to occur. And then it's going to go due north into the heart of Florida. Again, we have hurricane warnings up on both sides of Florida, from the Keys all the way north of Orlando, almost to you know Jacksonville. The entire state of Florida is expecting hurricane conditions within the next 24 to 36 hours. That's a given. And um, one thing I want to, I'm going to jump back to here, because I saw this with the latest update from the Hurricane Center. Watch as I bring you north with this thing, okay? Once we get north towards Tampa Bay, and then points north. Notice how it moves over Tampa Bay, but it never gets so far off the Gulf that you see much weakening. This thing is still 115 miles per hour, and they actually have this point on Monday at 8 a.m. offshore, almost near, you know, it's in the northeast, far northeastern Gulf. It's basically on land, but you notice it's still over 100 miles per hour moving through Tampa, downtown Tampa, straight up here. Still, you know, this new track on the eastern, on the western side of the state. Remember, that right side, Orlando, all of these big major cities, yes, the Atlantic coast is not going to see the major impacts that we're expecting, say, 24 to 48 hours ago. But it's almost a worse track for Florida because it puts more of the state, you know, if it would have went this way, let me get rid of all the scribble stripes, if it would have went up here, the west coast wouldn't see much, but it's not going there. It's going over the west coast, which they're going to see the worst impacts, Tampa, all the way down to Naples, even farther north. And then you're still on the right side for all of these, you know, highly populated areas like Orlando up through Jacksonville down to Miami. You're still going to get, you know, those 75 to 100 miles per hour wind gusts, maybe even more, depending on exactly where the track goes. So, you know, the news is better for the, the East Coast, but it's not great. It's really it's worse for Florida because the impacts are going to engulf really the entire state. Like I was showing you, the, the water inundation in the southern, southern part is going to be significant. In the southwestern corner of Florida, uh, this is, you know, 12 feet above ground level. So Naples, you know, all of these locations in the southwestern corner of the state, I hope that the residents there have heeded the evacuation orders and gotten out of town because the water is just going to be pushed into here. And it's going to be worse, a lot worse than Charlie. Charlie strengthened at the last minute, hence why the water didn't have a chance to pile up. The storm will be strengthening, but it also is going to be pushing a shirt because it's been an intense storm all this time. So it's going to be that Charlie wind, which was devastating in itself, on top of a lot of water that's going to be pushed into the coastline. Just wanted to quickly show you the latest spaghetti plots. Uh, you know, they've been trending west, but for the most part, we've got a consensus, a very close consensus. This is going to track up the western side of the state, and all of Florida is going to have some major impacts from Irma as we go into the next 24 to 48 hours, and it's already starting down south. You know, I'll jump right back to the, the radar imagery here, and notice some of these wind gusts. We're already getting 50s along the coast. You know, Miami's been gusting into the 40s and 50s. That, those conditions are just going to deteriorate as we go throughout the evening hours tonight, especially as we go into Sunday. That's when the worst of the weather impacts are going to be uh, moving into South Florida and then continuing up the coast as we go into Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, into Monday. Again, Mark Suddeth, he's going to be back with some updates later this afternoon. He's been putting out the weather stations. He's, he's got them in the Keys. He's going to be putting them out on the west coast of Florida as well. You can always track that information on the Hurricane Track app, and you can download that in your app store. I'm meteorologist Zach Perella for this update as of 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Have a great day.